Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there's Tucker. That's me. And we are in the first brand new Dodge vehicle in a decade. We are in the 2023 Dodge Hornet GT Plus all-wheel drive. That is a little bit of fun, but in this video we're going to tell you how this compact utility vehicle fits our family of three. Stay tuned. All right, Holly, like I said, first brand new Dodge in a decade. The last brand new Dodge was the Dodge Dart that they made from 13 to 16. And now we get this, which is essentially an Alfa Romeo Tonali with an American designed engine, powertrain, and all that good stuff. But uh, we've had this one closing in on a week now. Mm -hmm. This is actually my first time riding over here. Oh. You've driven it around without me. Is it your first time riding yeah, up there? It really is. Oh, okay. <laughs> You've driven it without me. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your initial thoughts? Of drivability? Of the vehicle. You're changing up the whole... No, that's uh, always my first question. <laughs> what are your initial thoughts? I've, I've got conflicting thoughts. Okay. Um, I will tell you that probably the price is going to make me lean one way or the other mm -hmm. because I'm kind of in the middle on this car. Okay. It's been fun to drive, mm -hmm. uh, but there are some things that are just kind of annoying to me. Oh, okay. So. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if you want to jump into those now or start with. I, I think we'll just follow a normal format <laughs> and get to them as we go here. So we'll start with the exterior styling and color and move to the inside, then talk driving okay. impressions and hit your annoyances along the way. What are your thoughts on the look of this vehicle on the outside? Well, the particular color that we have, Acapulco gold, <laughs> um, is very striking. <laughs> Code for you don't like it? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, this is what I'm saying. I have conflicting feelings, okay. and, and then I, I'll tell you why. Um, so it is probably not a color I would pick. Mm -hmm. However, I do like cars that don't look like any other cars on the road. And, and this doesn't. <laughs> and this this does not. Yes. Um, so I, I kind of like that, but I, I just don't think that's the color I would pick. Okay, flip side. Um, the other colors, there's just not really anything special about them, mm -mm. Um, except for the names are fun. Mm -hmm. And- Eight ball black, cue ball white, uh, blue bayou, blue steel. steel. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the names are fun, but they're just regular colors. This is the, really the only funky color that you can get. Mm -hmm. And I just really feel like the style of the car, if it is not a funky color, is just like a normal shape. Like okay. it doesn't really have, I think, I think for this car to be fun, to look fun and cool for me, it would have to be the Acapulco gold mm -hmm. or the black. Okay. or nothing. I, th I think some of the other ones just make it look like a ho-hum, regular Interesting. car. Interesting. Of course, I haven't seen them in person. I've only seen them online, so I could be completely wrong. So y'all yeah. don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are some uh, fun exterior cues on this one that they kind of stole from other Dodge vehicles. There are actual holes in the hood to let heat out, uh, to let that little two liter Hurricane 4 engine uh, cool off just a little bit. It does have familiar Dodge brand styling, but uh, their other products are all going away. This is practically the only Dodge product moving forward. We don't know when the Durango will see its f production end, but mm -hmm. uh, this is the foreseeable future. This is Dodge. Is um, on the black model, is mm -hmm. the Hornet symbol also black so that it's is my favorite thing of that is because we got the black top package with the track package so we had the option to get that black hornet on the side really yeah okay that also comes with the black 20 inch wheels and uh these red and black alcantara seats inside mm -hmm. with all the red stitching which nice. is a nice transition to the inside 
What are your thoughts in here? In here, it kind of feels like a sports car. Yes, very much um, so. And I've been really interested in the different uses of materials. Okay. So you have like this hard material that's mm -hmm. on the dashboard, but then it also goes like to the door and like down the side, not this part, but like mm -hmm. down the side in the back and in the back seat too, mm -hmm. like on the sides. Mm -hmm. um, which I like because that's usually like, especially in the back seat, like where you might put your foot to step in and it's yeah. hard plastic. Yep. So that that's nice. Um, but the, it's just like an interesting use. Like this kind of feels like a cheaper car to me. Okay. Um, but then you have like the leather stitching up here. I guess that's uh, fake leather. Fake. That's probably... Yeah. But still, it looks, it doesn't look like that. And yeah. then you have the steering wheel that's nice, a nice feel to it. Yeah. Uh, I figured you'd like that steering wheel. But, and then the seats are cloth down the middle. Alcantara. And then, okay, whatever. It's a brand of <laughs> suede. And then you've got the um, the plastic, not plastic, Leatherette. but the leatherette. <laughs> I don't feel like this is real leather. Could be, but all they talk about is the Alcantara. It's, whatever it is, it's soft. Yeah. Um, but it's on the outside, so yep. that's that's interesting too. The and then all like the red stitching, other, which, red like you stitching, said, makes so. it look like a, a sports car. Yeah. Uh, this I would is, like a little bit smaller steering wheel to make oh. it just to look just a little bit more like a sports car. But it is flat bottom. But it is flat bottom. So. Um, and very racy with the uh, grips. Mm -hmm. and you got the, the grips and it's nice and soft. So I will say this car, being the first brand new Dodge in a decade, is actually Italian. Mm. So they produced this in Italy alongside the Alfa Romeo Tonali, of which this shares a shell and some of the electronic components. But Dodge claims that the powertrain, suspension, and all the dynamics of it are purely Dodge, but definitely a lot of uh, Italian aspects in this. The steering mm -hmm. wheel reminds me of the last Alfa Romeo I was in. The blinker noises, uh, yeah. very much Alfa Romeo. Uh, this center screen here, Alfa Romeo. All the HVAC controls, Alfa Romeo. Mm -hmm. Very Alfa Romeo in here. Yeah. Um, so yeah let's talk about the noises okay let's. very interesting yes <laughs> the blinker noise sounds like it's in a tunnel so we're coming up to a stoplight here why don't we uh let them hear the blinker noise th themselves let's very interesting blinker noise yes and it doesn't like click into place it 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 pops back up i don't know it, it's odd and different and we drive a 2014 Chrysler product. This is very un-Chrysler <laughs> of the vehicle because it is so much Alfa Romeo. Like uh, the rear wiper you push down on this stock. Mm -hmm. The uh, lane keep you push the button on the end of the turn signal stock. The mm -hmm. uh, steering wheel controls are very much Alfa Romeo. This knob does a little bit of everything. It'll either change your tuning in default mode or you can hit this mode button and change what's on the center part of the large color uh, display screen or you can push it again and change what's over here and then you just yeah there's there's a lot going on sure. over there on the steering wheel and then uh, one of my major annoyances when you put the vehicle in drive mm -hmm. the gear selector completely blinds you from the one and only volume knob in the vehicle which is way over here you do have volume buttons on the steering wheel but the volume knob is completely hidden from view. Can you see it? I can your, see it. Yeah, my seating position, <laughs> it's obscured completely, so. Um, I like the volume knob. I like it. I just don't and like that I you can't know, see I it. mean, you know yeah. that it's there it, and it's got a feel, so yeah. you don't need to see it. Yeah. You shouldn't be looking down when you're driving anyway. Yeah. And I'm looking a long time trying <laughs> you to You shouldn't. You it. just stick your hand right here in your resting position and find the. That's not my resting position. <laughs> that's, that's my resting position. Uh, what are your thoughts like on it. storage in here before we get to uh, Tucker's wobbly head test? Well, we haven't talked about, it is three oh, seat. Yeah, yeah. Th um, three it, person memory for you, not over for me, but I do have a power seat. A power so I seat, like that. yeah. Oh, power and while seat. we're talking noises, I for, almost forgot. The yeah. unlock is... Did you hear the unlock. lumbar? That's yeah, just a... It's a... Huh. 
I mean, uh, it's an electric motor, but okay. <laughs> it's just, it, there's noises. There are noises. Uh, the we four need cylinder, to do an ASMR. <laughs> yes. Uh, the four-cylinder makes some interesting noises as well. aggressively sounding engine than most. I guess we'll have to come back to storage because we are turning on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas, where we can do a Tucker's wobbly head test and uh, see how it rides on rougher pavement with its sport tuned suspension. Tucker, how are you doing back there? It's great. Yeah? What do you think, Holly? It's goodish. Yeah. It's okay. mostly good. Yeah, I saw that bump coming. Um, it is a sport tuned suspension. It is firmer than most crossovers. Uh, it is definitely tuned to be more uh, aggressively driven than comfortably driven. So you definitely notice here. But the seats are super comfortable, mm -hmm. so that helps. Yeah, and I will note this being the GT model, it is the base model. And um, the other option is the RT, which is even more sporty than this. Mm. So, um, yeah, we've got big uh, Brembo brakes up there. But uh, Tucker, what do, you, what do you think about your space back there? We'll go ahead and talk about how much room do you have? Uh, not very much. Yeah, which I guess is a good segue to putting in his child safety seat, both forward and rearward facing there and showing just how much space I have up here when that is in rear facing. Putting Tucker's child safety seat back here in the back is relatively simple, but I want to do two things. I want to show you just how much room is in this front seat when we are in rear facing format. And then I want to talk about top uh, tethers and all the like back here. First thing, we have a 60-40 split bench, uh, split folding rear seat that does fold fairly flat. And the 40% is here on the passenger side where we typically like to put Tucker's child safety seat, which is really nice because then you have that full 60% uh, to open up if you need long items without having to take out Tucker's child seat. We do also have top tethers all the way across even when you take into account that we have a full down center armrest with a center pass through back here because well this is an italian vehicle in its at its roots uh, but you do get a top tether in the center section but i'll go ahead and show you it is right here very high up on the back all that is behind this hard parcel shelf uh, in the back but we'll get more to that when we actually put that top tether in but let's go ahead and get Tucker's child safety seat, which I already have in its rear facing configuration. This is a, a Graco extend to fit uh, child safety seat that uh, we did use when Tucker was rearward facing. We do have the headrest up all the way, but just do want to show you uh, about what this cargo or this seating section would look like with it in uh, the rear facing format and show you just how much room is up here for the front passenger now. You can see we do have power seats, but uh, at 510, this is not where I'd want to ride. You can see my knees are definitely in the dash, so this isn't ideal, but these are power seats, so I can adjust and get comfortable after I no longer have a rear-facing car seat back behind me. Okay, so you can see that is a little tight. This is a compact crossover, and that is about what you get. But the good news is kids only ride rear-facing for two, maybe three years, depending on their size and weight. Uh, it is safer to ride rear-facing, so keep them this way as long as possible. But Tucker is forward-facing now, so we'll go ahead and show you exactly what it's like to install this seat uh, for his uh, forward facing configuration. Now I'm going to go ahead and fish this top tether through right here and lean the seat forward so we can drop it down behind the hard parcel shelf, making sure not to get the seat belt caught behind the seat as well. 
get that in place. These seats don't recline, so this is the only uh, in only situation you have to worry about here is just getting it into place. You don't have to recline the seat back to actually get it to match. The lower tethers are marked with buttons on the uh, seat back, and they are exposed, but the seating material is kind of tight around the lower latches, uh, so that's something you may want to note. And then with the seat all the way up for its forward-facing configuration, there's plenty of room to get in and around uh, to really tighten this thing down. So that's fairly easy. Let's go around and show you the rear cargo compartment and just how easy it is to put that top tether in. Coming to the back of the vehicle, we do have a power hatch with a button right above the uh, rear license plate. And it does open up rather nice and wide. In this GT model, we get 27 cubic feet of space. The plug-in hybrid uh, RT gets 22.9. And I do suspect that is because you do not get this rear underfloor storage space in that RT, that is where the battery pack resides. But I really like uh, what Dodge has done here with this uh, hard false load floor uh, because you can either leave it in this upward position and have a relatively flat uh, load floor that uh, will transition nicely with your seats folded flat. You can lift it up and you can see we've got a couple little latches here where it will rest in place and you can get underneath it, whatever you may need down here. You can see we do have uh, no spare tire underneath here because you can also drop this down and get the maximum uh, cargo capacity back here with that in its lower position. We do have that hard parcel shelf that I referred to earlier, so that's just something to uh, keep in mind that it will kind of cut it into your cargo space. But I did want to finish installing Tucker's child safety seat, and that involves uh, putting in this top tether and I'm gonna need just a little bit more slack here. You can see just because of how shallow uh, the rear trunk area is in this vehicle, uh, very easy to reach from back here. And I did wanna also show you uh, by pulling these uh, covers off, uh, what the back of the seat did as you tighten this down. So this will be a two-handed operation to fully tighten this into place, but for the most part, this top tether will not destroy the tops of your seats. All right, so we talked rear cargo capacity in this, but what about storage up here? We're finally back to storage. <laughs> um, it's all right. Like the console, I mean, this is pretty small. And um, it gets smaller because of the air vents on the back side of it. So, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's really small and really far back. Yeah, it and, is really far back. And then we've got two cup holders. And then holders. this and up the here. Not come up? No, no. This up here, Qi wireless charger that makes your phone hot and doesn't really well. charge it if you're using any sort of connectivity here. But uh, it is there. So it's there. that's that. You do get a USB it A and USB C uh, plug up here, so you can do that. Yeah. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I like that. Very clear screen, but it got small. Of the I know it's really <laughs> small. Um, and then I was using the map feature yesterday, mm -hmm. and it was really hard to follow the yeah. streets and stuff like that. So overall, it's one of my complaints. <laughs> overall, ten and a quarter inches, but the actual CarPlay screen is really long and narrow, mm -hmm. so makes mm -hmm. everything kind of tiny up there. Mm -hmm. And I've had issues with some of the buttons working correctly. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, all right, are we finally to driving dynamics? Um, and characterization, or do you have more storage issues in here? <laughs> I don't have any more storage issues. There is a little cubby. I have here. more issues, just not storage <laughs> issues. <laughs> well, what should we do first? More issues or driving behavior? Um, more issues. Okay. Let's go. Let me just run through my issues here. Lay them on me. <laughs> um, I don't like the automatic start stop, and you do have to press it every time that you get in. There are in. two ways to disable that. Would you like to know which they are? Well, I know the one. Yeah. Ugh, Ugh. Got it. Ugh. Uh, the one is obvious right there is turning it off. The other is on the steering wheel in sport mode. Sport mode makes it a much more fun vehicle to drive and it turns off the automatic start stop. So that is my preferred method. 
that too has to be done every single time since it does mm -hmm. defeat auto start stop. And they need to do that to claim the fuel economy benefits. Yeah. What's your next one? The next one is, I wish there was a head up display. Yeah. Um, I do like that they have the speed limit sign and then it gives you the little red if you're going over or anything like that. I like that. I just wish it was on the head up just a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I don't love that there's not a... Neither did Tucker or I. We, uh, we really miss it, the sunroof. I know. And especially with as small as the interior feels. And it's dark. And as dark as the interior is, it does feel like you're in a hole. All right. Here. So, uh, <laughs> this one actually had a sunroof delete option on it that saved us $550. But yes, okay. definitely up option this one with the sunroof because it feels very dark in here right and i think it makes the inside feel smaller too yeah what do you think do you you miss the sunroof team man yeah. Yeah. yeah what are your others is that the last no, one? those are my my the big biggies ones. and right. and those in and of themselves would not make me not buy this car but i guess you can option that one mm -hmm. um but I have a feeling that the price is more than okay. what I would pay. I don't know. I don't know. We'll get to that. But I just, I just feel like it's an expensive car, and I would, I don't know how much it is. Again, that's what I said. I'm like on the fence, okay. depending on price. So uh, again, this being the GT is the base model. It does have a lot of options on it, but we'll get to price here in a second. How's it drive? Um, I like I like driving. I've enjoyed driving this car. So they say that this is the, let me make sure I get the proper marketing term. I've got my phone in the hot pad up here, not the wireless charger. Um, the marketing term for this one that they are oh so proud of is the industry's fastest and most powerful gas powered compact utility vehicle, which there are some asterisks there, but uh, this makes 268 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. We'll go zero to 60 in a Dodge Claim six and a half seconds. And it's only really big, true competitor, I would say, is the Mazda CX-5, which we both mm -hmm. liked. Mm -hmm. The base model of that makes 187 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque. So yes, this thing is much more powerful for less money uh, than the more powerful uh, CX-5 premium turbocharge, but yeah. Mm. Um, so uh, they're, they're quite proud of it. How does it drive in town? It, it's quick, right? Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I, can, I haven't had any issues whipping in and out of places. Um, I haven't taken it on the open highway or anything like that. I have. But um, I, have, I have put some miles in it. So I will note, uh, you and I, own a 14, 2014 uh, Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, which is essentially this in Jeep's lineup, although they don't make it anymore. Uh, it makes 271 horsepower and 239 pound-feet of torque from its V6. So this is a smaller, more powerful engine. Definitely feels peppier than your oh, Jeep, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's that. Um, steering. The steering Light heavy, been, what do you think? Um, I would say when I first started driving it, I felt like it was a little heavy, but not yeah. since I've been driving it around. The suspension, we already talked about Tucker's wobbly head. It's firm, but not harsh. Right, and yeah. again, the seats make up for any. Yeah. I, I did notice some rattles around in the dash on um, some textured pavement going out to your parents' house, but otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, it's fairly well buttoned down in here. Does that bring us to fuel economy and price? I think so. Ooh, you're on the brake. This is do not enter, babe. Oh. Fuel economy on the window sticker is premium fuel, 21 city, 29 highway, 24 combined. In our 176 miles, we're getting 21. Um, and that is combined. So a little lower than the window sticker. Although I have been driving it in sport mode. So that does play into it. Care to guess pricing? And this is 2024 pricing because 2024 pricing. Uh, we have moved into 2024. For this model, nothing has changed. They did add the RT trim for 2024, but mm -hmm. 
I'm thinking 65. <laughs> Way too high? Oh. I don't even think you can option one up that high. Oh, okay. Okay, well, see, I'm already feeling better about yep. my <laughs> things I don't like. Um, oh, so way too high. Mm -hmm. 40. 43,760 as this one sits. So this is a maxed out GT Plus, uh, which is the second level up. So it's GT, GT Plus, then RT, RT Plus. So uh, mid-pack, smaller engine, not the hybrid, or actually it's the bigger engine, but not the hybrid. Um, right around the same price of your 2014 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. So a lot of similar features inside, but newer, faster, more powerful. Could this be a Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk replacement in our garage? It does fit very nicely in our it garage. It does fit very nicely in 360 garage. cameras make it very easy to park. I do like the 360 cameras. We didn't talk much about those, but they are very nice. Yeah. I like it. So. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it, it would definitely, could definitely be in the lineup. If I could get a sunroof. $500. Back <laughs> in a pocket I would do $500 for a sunroof. Yeah, $515 sunroof delete credit. So. Yeah. So you like it. There would be some, the some conversation, but yeah, I like it. I like it. And on that note, if you want to see more from Holly, uh, some uh, behind the scenes stuff from her, go find her on Facebook and Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find all things GT Garage Talk at GT Garage Talk, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, and you can also go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for us in the Dodge Hornet GT Plus in Acapulco Gold, until next time, gearheads. Bye. Bye. Guys, when are we going to go back to the Discovery Science place? Well, uh, we don't have a membership there anymore. How come we don't? It expired. Do you want to look at my finger? Do you want to look at my finger? Daddy, do you want to look at it? Oh, yeah. You see how it's healing? See how it's healing?